Good day everyone, I'm Karen I. Leander, and today I'll be discussing all about e-commerce, focusing on digital markets and digital goods. This is chapter 10 of our subject matter in management information systems. At the end of my presentation, students were able to, number one, identify the unique features of e-commerce digital markets, and digital goods. Identify the principal e-commerce business and revenue models. Describe how e-commerce transformed marketing. Know the relationship of e-commerce and business-to-business -business transactions. Distinguish the role of mobile commerce in business and its important applications. Identify the issues that must be addressed when building an e-commerce website. And lastly, be familiar with the current status of e-commerce in the Philippines. First, let us define what is electronic commerce, or simply put as e-commerce. E-commerce refers to the use of internet and the web to transact business. More formally, e-commerce is about digitally enabled transactions between and among organizations and individuals. For the most part, um, this means transactions that occur over the internet and the web. Commercial transactions involve the exchange of value like money across organizational or individual boundaries in, in return for products and services. E-commerce began in 1995 when one of the most, uh, one of the first internet portals, Nes Netscape.com, accepted the first ads from major corporations and popularized the idea that the web could be used as a new medium for advertising and sales. In this slide, we can see the growth of e-commerce is very evident in three aspects. Business has been transformed with e-commerce. It became the fastest growing form of commerce when compared to physical retail stores services, and entertainment. Social, mobile, and local commerce have become the fastest growing forms of e-commerce. This is also very evident during this pandemic. Next is technology foundations. E-commerce is nothing without these technologies and infrastructures. Wireless internet connections like uh, Wi-Fi, WiMAX, 4G, and now 5G smartphones continue to expand. Powerful smartphones and tablet computers provide access to various apps, which will be discussed later. The Internet and Broadband Foundation becomes stronger in households and businesses as communication prices fall. Our communication with our loved ones become, becomes easier with social networking sites. Lastly, Internet-based models of computing greatly reduce the cost of e-commerce websites. New business models also have emerged and became dynamic to compensate with e-commerce revolution. Social sites have become the primary gateway to internet in news, music, and increasingly products and services that take advantage of people spending most of their time online. Traditional advertising is also disrupted as online ads grow twice as TV and print. On-demand service E-commerce sites are also in the rise. Newspapers and other traditional media adopted online. Online entertainment business models offering television, movies, and games continues to grow. Increasingly, the online distributors are moving into movie and TV production. As you can see in the graph below, the growth of e-commerce in business to consumer is going up. Though retail e-commerce revenues grew 15 to 25 percent per year until the recession of 2008 to 2009, when they slowed measurably. In 2018, e-commerce revenues grew at an estimated 12 percent annual. So that's a good uh, note you can see. So why has e-commerce grown so rapidly? The answer lies in the unique nature of the internet and the web, of course. Simply put, the internet and e-commerce technologies are much richer and more powerful 
than previous technologies revolutions such as radio, television, and the telephone. This slide describes the eight unique features of the internet and web as a commercial medium. Let's explore each of these unique features in more detail. So first is ubiquity. Internet web technologies available everywhere at home, at work, and elsewhere by desktop and mobile devices. So um, mobile devices are extended to service the local area's merchants. Its significance, the marketplace is extended beyond traditional boundaries and is removed from a temporal geographic location. So we can shop and it can take place anywhere, anytime. Con customer convenience is enhanced and shopping costs are reduced. So without uh, going outside, you can shop through your mobile phones and your gadgets and laptops. Global reach. The technology reaches across national boundaries around the earth. Its significance, the commerce has enabled across cultural and national boundaries seamlessly without modification. So we can order products across the globe. Universal standards. There is one set of technology standards, namely internet standards. With one set of these uh, technical standards across the globe, disparate computer systems can easily communicate with each other. Richness. Video audio and text messages are possible so this marketing messages are integrated into a single marketing messages message and consumer interactivity the technology works through interaction with the users consumers are engaged in a dialogue that dynamically adjusts the experience to the individual and makes consumer a participant in the process of delivering goods to the market so we can set um feedback to the seller if the product is good or bad or we can return the product alternatively if it doesn't fit our liking information density the technology reduces information costs and raises quality as i said earlier we can easily read the product we can easily communicate with our with our um, customers and the information that uh, needed by the customer is already given. You can already post it online easily. Personalization and customization. The technology allows personalized messages to be delivered to individual as well as to the groups. Lastly, social technology. This is the most popular feature of e-commerce. The technology supports content generation and sexual social networking, which is a very popular nowadays. The location, timing, and revenue models of businesses are based in some part of, and cost, on the cost and distribution of information. So the internet has created a digital marketplace where millions of people all over the world can exchange massive amount of information directly, instantly, and free. As a result, the internet has changed the way companies conduct business and increased their global reach. So in this slide, I'll, I'll simply describe the key concept of e-commerce that composed of two major concepts, which is the digital market and the digital goods in global marketplace. So digital market is the place and goods are the products that we sell online. Digital markets are said to be more transparent than traditional markets with reduced information asymmetry, search costs, transaction costs, and menu costs along with ability to change prices dynamically based on market conditions. An information asymmetry exists when one party in a transaction has more information that is important for the transaction than the other party. That information helps determine the relative bargaining power. In digital markets, consumer and suppliers can see prices being charged for goods and in that sense, Digital markets are said to be more transparent than traditional markets. Digital markets are also very flexible and efficient because they operate with redu reduced search and transaction costs, lower menu cost, greater price discrimination, and the ability to change prices dynamically based on market conditions. 
So this provides many opportunities to sell directly to the consumers by passing intermediaries such as distributors and retail outlets. So by eliminating this, the distribution channel can significantly lower the purchase and transaction cost. On the other hand, digital goods such as music, video, software, and books can be delivered over a digital network. Once a digital product has been produced, the cost of delivering that product digitally is extremely low since it will be only transported online, such as streaming music, streaming movie, etc. E-commerce is fascinating combination of business models and new information technologies. So let's start with a basic understanding of the types of e-commerce and then describe e-commerce business and revenue models. There are many ways to classify electronic commerce transactions. One is by looking at the nature of the participants. So the three major e-commerce categories are business to consumer e-commerce or B2C, business to business e-commerce or B2B and consumer to consumer e-commerce or C2C. So B2C e-commerce involves retailing products and services to individual shoppers. Amazon, Walmart, iTunes are example of B2C commerce. Barnesandnoble.com which sells books, software and music to individual consumer is also an example of B2C. On the other hand, um, B2B e-commerce involves sales of goods and services among businesses. Alemica's website for buying and selling chemicals and energy is an example of those. While C2C e-commerce involves consumers selling directly to consumer, for example, eBay, a giant web auction site, enables people to sell their goods to the consumers by auctioning their merchandise off to the highest bidder or for a fixed price. eBay acts as a middleman by creating a digital platform for peer-to-peer -peer, peer -peer e-commerce. Craigslist is the platform most consumers use to buy from and sell directly to others. Changes in the economics of information uh, described earlier have created the conditions for entirely new business models to appear while destroying older business models. So in this slide, I will describe some of the most important internet business models that have, that have emerged. All, in one way and another, use the internet, including apps on mobile devices, to add extra value to existing products and services or to provide new foundation for products and services. First is the e-tailer. Sells pro uh, physical products to products directly to consumers or to individual businesses. So the example of this is Amazon, Blue Nile, and those. Another business uh, model is a transaction broker saves user money and time by processing online sales transactions and generating a fee each time a transaction occurs. So some of which is eTrade.com and Expedia. Another business model is market creator. This provides a digital environment where buyers and sellers can meet, search for products, display products, and establish prices for those products can serve consumers or B2B e-commerce generating revenue from transaction fees. So these are eBay, Priceline.com, Exostar, and Alameda. Next is content provider. This creates a revenue by providing digital content such as news, music, photos, videos over the web. The customer may pay to access the content or revenue by generate, generated by advertising space. So some of which is WSJ.com, GettyImages.com, iTunes.com, and Amazon Games. Also, uh, another type of business model is a community provider. Yet again, the most famous. Provides an online meeting place where people with similar inter interests can communicate and find useful information. So these are Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, those. Portal provides 
initial point of entry to the web along with specialized content and other services so these are your um, web browser like yahoo amazon aol google safari edge and all those service provider lastly this is the last business model the service provider provides applications applications such as photo sharing video sharing and user generated content as services so this provide other services such as online data storage and back backup so these are your google docs we offer google drive photobucket.com for your photos dropbox again for your files and also for apple users their cyclouds a firm's uh, revenue model describes how the firm will earn revenue generate profits and produce superior return on investments of course they have to earn money so you can get their return although many e-commerce revenue models have been developed most companies rely on or some combination of the following six revenue models so these models are advertising sales subscription free or freemium transaction fee and affiliate so this is how they get their revenue through these six uh, revenue models so let's discuss one by one in the advertising revenue model a website generates revenue by attracting a large audience of visitors who can then be exposed to advertisements so the advertising model is the most widely used revenue model in e-commerce and agreeably without advertising revenues the web would be a vastly different experience from what it is now because people would be asked to pay for access to content so we'd rather see an ad every now and then than to pay for every time we access the e-commerce site so websites with the largest viewership or that attracts a highly specialized differentiated viewership and are able to retain a user's attention so stickiness can charge higher advertising rates so as you can notice um the more views that you have in youtube or the the fame the more famous you youtuber you are more ads will be attracted to you because they know that many people you attract more people to watch those ads on the other hand um in the sales revenue model companies derive revenue by selling goods information or services to customers companies such as amazon which sells books music and other products llb.com gap uniqlo all have revenue uh, sales revenue models content providers make money by charging for downloads for intel files such as music tracks in itunes store or books for down or books or for downloading music and or video streamings Apple has pioneered and strengthened the acceptance of micropayments. So micropayment systems provided content providers with cost-effective method for processing high, val high volumes for a very small monetary transaction. So as we can see, we can buy games for as low as $0.25 cents to $5 cents per transaction. So this is how Apple does its business to have revenue. In the subscription revenue model, a website offering content or services charges a subscription fee for access to some uh, or all of its offerings on an ongoing basis. So content providers often use this revenue model. So Netflix is one of the most successful uh, subscriber sites with over 100 million customers worldwide in 2018 it's 2018 alone so i guess in today's time um, they have more than that since uh, netflix have grown fast since that year to be successful the subscription model requires the content to be perceived as different differentiated having high added value and not readily available elsewhere or easily replicated so they should offer more exclusive uh, contents like in hbo go or hbo max there are certain movies and series that you can only access to that and not in netflix and so on 
Another type of revenue model is the free or freemium model, revenue model. The firm offer basic services or content for free and charge for a premium for advanced and special features. So for example, Google offers free applications but charges for premium services. The idea is to attract very large audiences with free services and then convert some of these audiences to pay subscription for premium services. So actually one problem with this model is converting people for being freeloaders to paying customers. So free can be a powerful model for losing money. None of the freemium music streaming sites have earned a profit to date. So nevertheless, they are finding that free service with ad revenue is more profitable than the paid subscriber part of their business. So people like us, we are not aware that even though we don't pay for premium, but even though we hear ads while listening music, while we watch um, YouTube videos, so even though we don't subscribe in premium, they are still earning money through that ad since I said here, um, not all people have the capacity to subscribe for this type of um, social networking sites to search. So on the other hand, in the transaction fee revenue model, a company receives a fee for enabling or executing a transaction. For example, eBay provides an online auction marketplace and receive a small transaction fee from a seller if the seller is successful in selling an item. Online financial services from banking to payment systems rely on a transaction fee model. While online banking and services are dominated by a large banks with millions of customers thought of financial tech firms, uh, also known as fintech firms, have grown rapidly to compete with the bank for peer-to-peer. -peer. So bill payment, money transfer, lending, crowdsourcing, financial advice, and account aggregate aggregation services so lastly in the affiliate revenue model websites send visitors to other websites in return for a referral fee or percentage of the revenue from any resulting sales so referral referral fees are also referred to as lead generation fees so amazon uses affiliates that steer business to the Amazon website by placing the Amazon logo on their blogs. Now it's the vlogs for the influencers. Personal blogs and vlogs often contain display ads as part of these affiliate programs. Some vloggers and bloggers are paid directly by manufacturers or receive free products for speaking highly of products and providing sales to sales channels. So this here in the Philippines, actually being an affiliate or being an influencer became like a career for some so you're doing nothing they're just making vlogs about the products and promoting it um decisively every now and then and but with that they are getting paid plus they're getting uh, the experience of those services and products as well so it's like a testimonial of those products Although e-commerce and the internet have changed uh, the entire industries and enabled new business models, no industry has been af more affected than marketing and marketing communications. So the internet provides marketers with the new ways of identifying and communicating with millions of potential customers at costs far lower than the traditional media. So including uh, search engine marketing, data mining, recommender systems, and targeted email. So creating sites where thousands, even millions of people can interact offers business firms new ways to market and advertise and to discover who likes and dislikes their products. In a phenomenon called wisdom of crowds, some argue that large numbers of people can make better decisions about a wide range of topics or products than a single person or even a small committee by of experts so beyond merely soliciting advice firms can be actively helped in solving some business problems by using crowdsourcing also many e-commerce marketing firms use behavioral targeting techniques to increase their effectiveness of banners reach reach media 
and video ads. So behavioral targeting refers to tracking the click streams. These are the history of clicking behavior of individuals on thousands of websites to understand their interests and intentions and expose them to advertisement. They are uniquely suited to their online behavior. One of the fastest growing media for branding and marketing is social media. So companies will spend an estimated 30 billion US dollars in 2019 using social networks such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn to reach millions of consumers who spend hours and hours a day on social sites. So social e-commerce is e-commerce based on the idea of the digital social graph, mapping of all significant online relationship. Social graph is synonymous with the idea of social network used to describe offline relationship. So they use a pattern how to entice the ads in our social networking sites. Now I'm showing you this slide for us to have a quick idea on how much companies spend on online ads. I'll just highlight the top three online marketing and advertising formats that was highly um, spent on. So evident to the graph, companies spent most in display ads with 67.1 million US dollars. These are banner ads, pop-ups, leave behinds with interactive features. So increasingly behaviorally, targeted to individual web activity. So this includes social media and blog display ads. So next is the search engines with 53.3 US million dollars. It is text ads targeted at precisely what the customer is looking for at the moment of shopping and purchases. Purchasing, uh, this is a uh, sales oriented. So next is a video this has the fastest growing format of online marketing and advertising with 21.2 million us dollars it is engaging and entertaining and behaviorally targeted and interactive it is branding and sales in one so by the way the source of this graph is based on e-marketer uh, entitled digital ad spending by format in 2018. so that's it the trade between business firms, uh, B2B commerce, represents a huge marketplace. The process of conducting trade among business firms is complex and requires considerably human intervention. Therefore, it consumes significant resources. While B2B e-commerce refer to the commercial transactions that occur among business firms online, Increasingly, these transactions are flowing through a variety of internet-enabled mechanisms. So as a result, B2B e-commerce generates efficiencies by enabling companies to locate suppliers, solicit bids, place orders, and track shipments in transit electronically. Net marketplace provide a single digital marketplace for many buyers and sellers, while private industrial networks link a firm with its suppliers and other strategic business partners to develop highly efficient and responsive supply chains. So I'll tackle this further in the following slides. About 80% of online B2B e-commerce is still based on proprietary systems for electronic data interchange. EDI enables the computer-to-computer -computer exchange between two organizations of standard transactions such as invoices, bills of lading, shipment schedules, or purchase orders. Transactions are automatically transmitted from one information system to another through a network, eliminating the printing and handling of paper at one end and the in inputting of data to each to, to other. Each major industry in the U.S. and much of the rest of the world has EDI standards that define the structure and information fields of electronic transaction for that industry. In the illustration below, companies use EDI to automate transaction for B2B e-commerce and continuous inventory replenishment. So suppliers can automatically send data about the shipments to purchasing firms. 
the purchasing firms on their other hand can use EDI to provide production and inventory requirements and payment data suppliers in just one go. Next is with e-commerce B2B, we are given new ways of buying and selling. So the internet and web technology enable businesses to create electronic storefronts for selling to other businesses using the same techniques as used for B2C commerce. Alternatively, businesses can use internet technology to create extranets or electronic marketplaces for linking to other businesses for purchase and sales transactions. So um, net marketplaces, which are sometimes called e-hubs, provide a single digital marketplace based on internet technology for many buyers and sellers, as shown in the figure below. They are industry-owned or operate as indiv independent intermediaries between buyers and sellers. So net marketplaces generate revenue from purchase and sale transactions and other services. Participants in net marketplace can establish prices through online negotiations, auctions, or other requests for quotations, or they can be used fixed prices. So with a net marketplace, we can have a single digital marketplace. Lastly, B2B e-commerce builds a highly efficient and responsive supply chains through a private industrial network. So a private industrial network typically consists of a large firm that's in the middle using a secure website to link its suppliers and other key business partners as shown in the figure. The buyer owns the network and it permits the firm and designated suppliers, distributors, and other business partners to share product design and development. Marketing production, scheduling, inventory management, and an unstructured communication including graphics and emails. Another term for a private industrial network is a private exchange. So again, a private industrial network results to a highly efficient and responsive supply chain. With the rampant usage of smartphones and tablets, it is not shocking that m-commerce is the fastest growing form of e-commerce, expanding at the rate of 30% more per year and an estimated to grow to $500 billion by 2022, as shown in the graph. Further, mobile e-commerce is the fastest growing type of B2C e-commerce and represented about 34% of all e-commerce in 2018. So uh, the source of the graph is uh, data from e-marketer chart titled Retail and Commerce Sales US uh, 2018 to 2023. Uh, meanwhile, According to Investopedia, mobile commerce, also known as m-commerce, involves using wireless handheld devices like cell phones and tablets to conduct commercial transactions online, including the purchase and sales of products, online banking, and paying bills. With m-commerce, users can transact anywhere, anywhere, provided there's a wireless internet provider available in that area. Mobile commerce has increased rapidly as security issues have been resolved. So the security uh, features that we have now is we have this um, face recognition. We also have this uh, thumb recognition before we transact with our delicate uh, mobile apps like in mostly in banking needs. Companies like Apple and Google have introduced their own mobile commerce services. So, how does it differ with e-commerce? E-commerce may be conducted via a desktop computer or laptop, smartphone, or tablet. However, e-commerce is typically associated with computer in which user has to find a location with an internet connection. Conversely, m-commerce specifically refers to transactions done via smartphone or any mo mobile devices. With m-commerce, users can transact anywhere provided there's a wireless internet provider available in that area. m-commerce transactions tend to be done with a few clicks, while e-commerce done via tablet, wi uh, laptop, 
or desktop may involve a time and exploring company's website. With those differences uh, of e-commerce and m-commerce gave birth to m-commerce applications, the portability of mov mobile devices help businesses extend their reach to their customers through their mobile commerce. M-commerce is especially well suited for location-based applications such as finding local hotels, restaurants, monitoring traffic and weather, providing personalized location-based marketing. On the other hand, mobile phone and handles are being used for mobile bill payment, banking, securities trading, transportation, schedule updates, and downloads of digital contents such as music, games, and video clips. Uh, only M-commerce requires wireless portals and specialized digital payment system can handle micropayments. That's why um, some of the apps uh, before or as we download it, they are already asking if we have credit cards or debit cards so we can facilitate these micropayments. So the GPS capabilities of smartphones have made geo-advertising, geo-social, and geo-information services possible. Building successful e-commerce presence requires a keen understanding of business technology and social issues as well, a systematic approach. So today, an e-commerce presence is not just a corporate website, but also includes social network sites on Facebook and Twitter. And smartphone apps where customers can access your services. So developing and coordinating all these customers' venues can be a bit difficult. So the two most important management challenges in building successful e-commerce presence are number one, developing a clear understanding of your business objectives. And number two, how to choose the right technology to, um, to achieve these objectives. Though there were challenges, there are also strategies on how to overcome these. First is a company may be guided with an e-commerce presence map. As you can see here in the slide, an e-commerce presence requires firms to consider four types of presence with specific platforms and activities associated with each. So the illustration again provides a roadmap to the platform and, and related activities you will need to think about when developing your e-commerce presence. So as shown, for example, there are four kinds of e-commerce presence, so websites, email, social media, and offline media. So a company must address different platforms for each of these types. So for an instance, in the case of website presence, there are three platforms. There is a traditional desktop, the tablet, and smartphone. Meaning you can access uh, this website through those three more uh, platforms with each uh, different capabilities and so on. So moreover, each of this type of e-commerce websites there are related activities that needs to consider. Uh, for instance, in the websites again, a company will want to engage in search marketing, search engine marketing display ads, affiliate programs, and sponsorships. So if he tends to build a website, he must uh, focus on those activities and so on and so forth for uh, those three types of presence. Where would you like to be a year from now? So it is very helpful for a company to have a rough idea of the time frame for, the, for developing your e-commerce presence when you begin. You should have your project down into small number of phases that could be completed within specified time. So the table illustrates a sample of a one-year timeline for the development of an e-commerce presence for a startup company devoted to fashion for teenagers. So, so as you can see, it, it composed of uh, six phases to achieve uh, with a corresponding activity and a milestone. So this is for a one-year plan. To localize my topic, I'll be discussing briefly our government's trust towards e-commerce. So we Filipinos have already embraced e-commerce as part of our lives. Despite the challenges we face in infrastructure and technology adoption, 
we still have actively participated in the growth and evolution of the technology, its platforms, and economy. So why do we encourage our entrepreneurs to go online? Well, we are primed for an e-commerce revolution. The Philippines has always boosted of a large, young, and growing population as the driving force of its economic growth and resilience. Our people have been our number one resource and are also proving to be the valuable in the global economic landscape in the decades to come. So as shown in the snapshot, entrepreneurs took advantage of the 110.2 million people with 152.4 million mobile connections and 73.91 million internet connections. So as a result, there is a total of Philippine internet economy internet economy in 2020 that was uh, accounted to 7.5 billion US dollars and it is projected to grow by 2025 with 28 billion US dollars. Basta e-commerce madali. This is our battle cry in the agency. Our commitment for everything to become easy. So the e-commerce Philippines 2020 roadmap is designed as an easy read it provides a simple narrative that contains an assessment of where we are, where we want to go, our goals and objectives, and how to get there. These are our strategies and measures of success. As the logo connotes, we see e-commerce as easy, as easy as pointing the finger towards a direction, as tapping the fingers on the keyboard, as clicking the mouse, or as pressing a button. It's the internet and the e-commerce at your fingertips. Easy for market access, digitalization, and logistic integration. The roadmap aligns with and contributes to the Philippine Development Plan 2017 to 2022, which creates the foundation for an inclusive, high trust, resilient, and globally competitive economy. Outline strategies for the achievement of a long-term ambition 2040, which is the matatag, maginhawa, at panatag na buhay for all Filipinos. And lastly, reinforces the Philippines' commitment to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So, what do we hope to achieve this? More online sellers selling either in the domestic and or foreign markets. That's a cross-border trade. Whether business to consumer, business to business, business to government, the e-commerce roadmap works to increase your sales, protect your company, and ultimately grow your business. How? The formula is simple. Ensure speed, enhance security, establish structure, to expand sales. To date, out of 53 agendas in the initiatives, based on the APEC Digital Prosperity Checklist of E-Commerce Roadmap of 2016 to 2022, 37 or 70% were already done. 13 agendas or 25% of those are ongoing. 3 or 6% are for discussion. The change of administration doesn't hamper our goals towards e-commerce. In fact, this is the number one priority of our Secretary, Fred Pasquale that is to upgrade, upskill, and upsize MSMEs. So us in the department will continuously promote digitalization and digital transformation programs for MSMEs in collaboration with BICT. By using e-commerce platforms, MSMEs can access bigger markets for their products. And that ends my presentation on Chapter 10, E-Commerce, Digital Markets, and Digital Goods. Thank you for listening, and I hope I was able to impart important knowledge about the topic with you. Thank you again, and God, God bless us all.